All right, so now we come to the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. So the first part says that we can use a definite integral to construct an antiderivative if we don't already have one. Um, the second part says that if we do happen to have an antiderivative lying around, we can use it to evaluate the definite integral. All right. So that means, for example, let's look at that, you know, the one that we kind of beat to death in the previous section. Integral of 4x minus x squared dx. Okay, so here's, here's my f of x. Okay, we know that antiderivative here is given by 2x squared minus 1 third x cubed. Possibly plus a constant, right? But it does say any antiderivative. So let's use this one, right? We could add a constant if we want, but it's not going to matter. And you can see right away why it's not going to matter because we're going to evaluate this at the two endpoints, right? And if there was a constant there, we'd add it here and we'd subtract it there. It would cancel out. So we might as well just go with this one, okay? So we, uh, we work this out and we say f of zero is just zero. What's f of four? f of four is going to be two times four squared minus one third of four cubed. Okay, so that is 16 times two, 32 minus 64 over three. Okay, which is 32 over 3, right? And if you go back and you look at the results that we had using Riemann sums in the previous section, that should look like a fairly familiar result, right? And that's a whole lot less work than using Riemann sums, right? f of 4 minus f of 0 gives us 32 over 3, gives us the answer, and we have it, right, straight away. Um, that's the power of the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? We can now very quickly evaluate definite integrals as long as we can come up with an antiderivative. Of course, we're going to discover that finding antiderivatives is not nearly so easy as finding antiderivatives. Um, in fact, as you go on to Calculus 2, there's going to be a whole chapter on methods for finding antiderivatives. Um, but still, as long as you can come up with an antiderivative, this is going to be far preferable of a method um, than using Riemann sums, right? And in fact, um, it's going to succeed in situations where it would be effectively impossible to try and get a closed form answer using Riemann sums, okay? So we'll pause here. We're going to come back and again, it's important enough of a result that it deserves a proof. So we're going to look at a proof for the second part of the fundamental theorem as well.